Hello and welcome to Boxer's Shorts. I'm Adam Boxer and I'm a science teacher trying to help you understand more of GCSE science. In these short videos, I will try and take difficult concepts from GCSE science, break them down, um, help you understand them, and then do some practice questions on those concepts. In terms of some general tips for using these videos, definitely do not have your phone on or anywhere around you. It's a distraction and it means you won't be able to concentrate properly. The same applies for other tabs on your computer. So don't have your social media tabs open on your computer or laptop. It will just distract you. I'm going to ask you to do some questions. If you don't actually do them, you won't actually learn anything. So make sure when I do ask you to do those questions, you do them. And finally, let me know in the comments if there is a topic that you want me to cover. Thanks for listening. And remember, you can subscribe and just let me know if there's something you want me to do for you. All right, time to look at elastic potential energy, which is about the energy that is stored in a spring. And I do apologize in advance. This is the third time I've done this video. And unfortunately, my computer deleted it the first two times and corrupted the files. So uh, I'm going to go through it a bit quicker because uh, there's only so much one person can take. Right, so let's say I've got a spring. It looks like this. Now, if I put energy in, I can stretch that spring out. So I can pull it out and stretch it to this point. It's now storing elastic potential energy, which we write as capital E with a little e underneath it. What does the amount of energy it stores depend on? Well, the first thing is how far I've stretched it. If I stretch it this far, it's going to store this much energy. If I stretch it this far, it's going to store more energy, this far even more energy. So it depends on what we call the extension. The extension is this distance here. It's not the whole length of the spring, it's just how far it's gone, the extension. Extension goes up, energy goes up. The other thing that it depends on is something a bit less uh, straightforward, and that's something called the spring constant, which we call K. Now, what do I mean when I say the spring constant? The spring constant is about the amount of force I need to use to move this spring. So this spring might be quite easy to pull out, but I take another spring, and I put in the same amount of effort, but I can only get it to go a little bit further. I'm still putting in quite a lot of effort, but it's just not pulling out. This one's quite easy, this one's quite hard. So this one has a higher spring constant. It's harder to pull out. And as that spring constant increases, the energy increases as well. So if I have a really stiff spring, a really difficult spring to pull, and I put in effort into it, it stores more energy. The unit for that is called a newton per meter. What that means is how many newtons it takes to move it one meter. So if something has a spring constant of 10 newtons per meter, for example, it might like say this one. Let's say I moved it a meter. It only cost me 10 newtons in. I only needed to put 10 newtons to get it to move that far. If I had another one, say this one was much stiffer. If I want to get this one to move by one meter, I need to put in 100 newtons worth of effort. So this one would have a higher, so the second one has a higher spring constant. So if we were to write that up as an equation, we'd have E, uh, e equals half times uh, K times E squared. Where's the half from? Where's the squared from? Like with the previous video when we spoke about kinetic energy, I'm not going to go into it. And this, but this uh, formula should look really, really similar to the kinetic energy equation one. So we'd have elastic uh, potential energy. K, remember, is called the spring constant. And E, remember, is called extension. And in this case, it's squared. Units, joules, half time newtons per meter times by meter squared because it's that is in meters and it's squared let's do some examples so let's say i've got a spring it's got a spring constant of i don't know uh, 40 newtons per meter i stretch it and its length to start with 
is ooh, let's go for 85 centimeter and its length at the end is 105 centimeter its extension is this distance here which in this case is going to be the difference between 85 and 105 so 25 centimeter sorry this should be this should say 85 centimeter 20 so 25 centimeter extension going from a length of 85 to a length of 105 means it's extended by 25 again by the way if at any point you feel like you're ready to just do these then just pause your screen do the example and then check afterwards data I've got my K equals 40 newtons per meter I've got my extension which is um, 25 centimeter which in this case is 0.25 meters divided by 100 got to change that over straight away EE equals half times K times E squared Now I like to do these one step at a time. Start with doing that because that's the easiest thing. Then do my square, which is 0 0.0625. And there you have it. Okay, now the last one we do before you guys go off and do some practice. Uh, let's say I've got a spring. Uh, the extension we'll call 1.3 meters. I don't know what K is, but the energy that it took to do that we'll say was 47 joules D E S C U and again if you think you're ready to do this just go off and do it and check the answer in a minute or once you've done it really so D I've got E E equals 47 joules K duh. E equals 1.3 meters oh, sorry now when you look at that again it looks a bit complicated let's do it just step by step so 47 equals half times k times let's do this first because it's the easiest thing so 1.3 times 1.3 gives me 1.69 I've now got a half there a K there and a 1.69 so I don't really know what to do with the K yet but I can definitely do a half times 1.69 so I get 47 equals 0 0.845 times by K and now already that looks really familiar divide both sides by 0.845 um, and that gives me 55.62 equals K and the units for that would be 55.62 Newtons per meter if you got that done if you got that right well done uh, if you didn't have a really good careful look at the working and then get ready to move on to the questions potential energy questions as ever when you're ready pause the video do the questions and then press play when you want to go over the answers Right, so you stretch a spring, what factors affect how much elastic potential energy is stored in it? That's the spring constant and how far it's stretched. Um, you don't need to know the total length of the spring because it's about extension. So it's about how far it was before and how far it's come since then. You don't need to know the total length, you just need to know the difference between what it is now and what it was then. Um, which spring is easier to stretch? Well, definitely the second one because the first one, for every meter, you need half a newton. Whereas for the second one, for every meter, you need 40 newtons. Um, you've then got a spring straight calculation there, um, and that gives you 9 joules. 
the bottom. And then again, another straight calculation there. It gives you 0 0.081 joules. Um, and then you've got a spring constant of 12 newtons per meter. Potential energy store is 400 joules. That you'll need to do a rearrangement and you'll need to square root at the end to get 8.16 meters. Thank you for listening as ever and do feel free to subscribe and let me know if there's anything that you want me specifically to cover or if you have any feedback for me, especially if I got any of these questions wrong.